Kelvin bridge is a modified version of the Wheatstone bridge. It has a couple of additional uh, resistors and for the basis of this um, analysis we're going to consider this wire here as having a resistance RW. So like any raciometer uh, we're looking at the ratio of the voltage dropped across RM to the ratio of the voltage dropped across RN and we're going to compare it with the ratio of the voltage dropped between this point and this point to the voltage dropped between this point and this point. So when the bridge is balanced then the voltage at C is equal to the voltage at G i.e. the ratio of the voltage from B to C is equal to the, to the ratio of the voltage from C to D is equal to the ratio of the voltage from A to G as from G to E. So that's shown here in this equation. The voltage from C to D, so this guy here, is uh, total voltage, voltage from A to E, divided by the total resistance, multiplied by Rn, and similarly from B to C, uh, it's just multiplied by Rm instead. So, if I'm looking at this um, ratio, I know what C to D is, I know what BC is, so I can substitute them into this equation. And we see automatically that these guys will cancel. So that the voltage from B to C to BCD, this ratio, is equal to Rn over Rn. So we've completed this side of the equation. For the next side, we're going to look at uh, this VAG and VGE, uh, which is a little bit more uh, complex. To start uh, the analysis, we we'll first need to look at the total resistance between A and E. And to do that, we first must look at the resistance of this parallel network, uh, which I'm calling RHF. And these are just, you know, two branch parallel network. And in a parallel network, uh, the total resistance is the product over some rule. Okay, so the product of what's in each branch over the sum of the branches. So the total resistance from A to E is equal to this resistor, RA, plus what's in here, plus the resistance here, uh, Rx. So if I have the total resistance, and if I divide the total voltage by the total resistance, I'll get the current down through here. And if I multiply that then by RHF, I get the voltage between H and F. And I need that because if I want to cal calculate the current I2, I need to divide the voltage between H and F by the resistance in this branch, which is Rm plus Rn. And having got that current, I can work out the voltage between H and G, which is the current. So I2 times here, times the resistance Rm. Having deduce that, I can get the voltage from A to G. So this plus this. So the voltage from H to G is um, voltage across RA, which there's the current times RA, plus the voltage from H to G, which is there. So I have a number of equations here. This is just basically what we've had on the previous screen. And um, this equation here is replicated up here. So the first thing we've done is, uh, so if that's gone up there, if we look at RA here, resistance from AT, I've just expanded it out, said what it was. Okay, there's resistance from AT, and put that in there. Um, I then looked at VHF, it's voltage from H to F, and that's what it was from the previous screen, and I've just put that in there. Then uh, in this equation we had RAE. So again I've taken that from over here and stuck it in. And when we have a fraction here I can really stick that under that line there. So then we have two similar fractions. So VAE times RA goes into this by Rm plus Rn and 
this just goes straight into it. And all I've done in this slide, or in this equation, is taken BAE and put it out to one side. So if we look at the next slide, then uh, we're now going to look at the voltage from G to E. So all of this stuff is still the same. Uh, I2 is still the same. But the voltage from G to F changed slightly. So we're multiplying the current now by Rn instead of Rm, which was in the previous uh, example. And the voltage from G to E is uh, the current total current multiplied by Rx plus the voltage from G to F, which gives me uh, this equation here. So I'm going to put that all together just like I did previously. And let's see how that minimizes. Well, it minimizes really exactly as the other the other slide. So uh, if you follow that, you know, we're just substituting for RAE, then BHF, then RAE down here, and then just getting um, a common denominator, and we are left with this equation here. So now I have an expression for the voltage from A to G, an expression from the voltage from G to E. And we originally said that the bridge was balanced when the voltage from B to C, the voltage from Z to Z, was equal to the voltage from A to G over the voltage from G to E. And we'd already seen that this guy was equal to Rm over Rn. Therefore, we can say that Rm over Rn is equal to that, which is equal to, and then we're just going to substitute in here for these guys. And let's see how we reduce that now. Well, immediately we can see that this can go from both sides. Okay, that's what I have here in this equation. And then, you know, I really want to get an expression for Rx. So I'm going to bring Rx up. I'm going to bring Rx up uh, from here up to there, and then bring Rm down and Rn across. So, so basically, I've taken this guy here move them there and Rn has gone up and there's Rm. Okay so the next obvious thing was to take this expression here and bring it over to this side which I've done. So we've changed the sign and now uh, we just have to divide everything by Rm plus Rn uh, which I've done down here. So now I have an expression for Rx. Okay, so there was our expression for Rx. Well, what I can do is, uh, there's our HF. So we saw that was the parallel network. There it is there, which is the product over sum. So I'm just substituting here for that parallel network. Okay, so I've s substituted those there and there. Okay. So in the next line, I've taken Rm and Rn, and I've brought them out as a fraction on their own. And then, uh, having done that, I uh, have taken Ra out on its own here. And... Um, Uh, I've got rid of the RM and RN. So these guys here will cancel out there. That will cancel out there. And that will cancel out there. So that allows me to bring the RA out on its own. Which uh, gives me this equation down here. So um, I've now multiplied... Um, by Rn plus Rm, so that's Rn, Rm, Ra, and there's the Rn, Rm multiplying this side here. And there's no change to that. Okay, so we go to the next slide. So now what I have here is I have a common denominator, so I can bring these, uh, this side together. 
R W is common to all of them. So take R W out. This is the common denominator. So I have R M times R N over R M minus R N. So uh, I can change that slightly. I can say that that's the same as R M times R N over M. That's basically that that guy minus. So if I'm bringing this outside the brackets, I need to put R M in here. Having uh, done that, I can say that's the same as taking this out here and multiplying it by this guy, which is what I've done in this equation. Okay, so I've taken this element, brought it outside, and we're going to multiply this guy by that. And because we're really looking at ratios, just divide it across by RA uh, to give me this equation. Now the reason I did what that is that is how the equation is given in allaboutcircuits.com. Uh, however, if you go to Wikipedia, you'll tell you that the the value of the unknown resistor Rx is equal to this. Right? Um, and that's really just uh, taking this side of the equation and um, I'm multiplying <coughs> by above and below the line by RM. Okay, so if I multiply this side by RM, I get rid of it. So I get RM RN, and I get RN RM, and if I multiply below the line, I have to put the RN there. So that's another um, version of of the same thing. Okay, so that's what it is in Wikipedia, and this is what it is in in allaboutcircuits.com. So. We can see from that equation, uh, if I go back, you know, if Rw is as close to zero as possible, then this will become practically zero, and the Rx um, can be solved using you know, a simple Wheatstone bridge. You know, if this is zero, then the whole thing becomes sim similar to a simple Wheatstone bridge. So if we keep the R resistance RW should be as low as possible, um, and when that happens, it becomes a Wheatstone bridge. So um, I got some information from Wikipedia and allaboutcircuits.com, and hopefully that has explained the Kelvin bridge.